Sputnik is a massive plane and a basin located on Pluto. With a surface area of about 900,000 kilometers square, it is pretty much the size of Venezuela. Unlike the rest of the surface, which is much more rugged, Sputnik is much more smooth and has almost no impact craters. Now Pluto is indeed covered with a layer of nitrogen ice overall, but Sputnik has a very concentrated amount of it. Nitrogen, which makes up about 78% of the Earth's atmosphere, is mostly in a frozen state on Pluto. That is because the temperatures on Pluto are around minus 240 degrees Celsius. They are that low because Pluto is about 40 times more distant from the Sun than the Earth. We know a lot about Pluto's features because NASA's New Horizons probe gave us stunning images of Pluto in 2015 after traveling for nine years. Now despite nitrogen being frozen on Pluto, it's still not so frozen such that it's very rigid like a rock. Rather, it is somewhat fluid and it has a tendency to flow. The Sputnik region has countless flow patterns. The northern region especially shows it. Nitrogen even filled in this nearby 50 kilometer wide crater. The near total lack of craters in this region is not a coincidence. The dynamic nature of nitrogen ice in Sputnik erases any evidence of an impact occurring relatively quickly. The estimate is that Sputnik has a surface at least less than 10 million years old, while some evidence points towards the age of the surface being around 200,000 years old. Considering that Pluto is about 4.5 billion years old, like any other significant object in the solar system, then the surface age of Sputnik is pretty fresh considering those timescales. While looking at this region closely, what can be seen are many cell structures. These are possibly created when ice from below the surface was heated up from the internal structure, and because of heating, it was propped up to the top and then it started spreading, forming the cell structure. This cell pattern is also present on some clouds on Earth because of the same underlying process. Much of the terrain on Sputnik, including the cells, is characterized by fields with many large pits. These pits may be caused due to the sublimation of nitrogen ice. Sublimation is a process in which ice turns directly into gas. Ice fracturing is also believed to play a role in their formation. It is also worth mentioning that although Sputnik is indeed mostly just nitrogen ice, some of the ice there is also carbon monoxide and methane. At the western edge of Sputnik are a lot of mountains, and they are not composed of nitrogen. Nitrogen is, as shown, too fluid on Pluto to create mountains. Rather, these mountains are made up of water ice. Water ice at the frigid temperatures of Pluto is very rigid and acts more like rock does on Earth. A lot of these mountains are also very tall. One that is particularly tall is Tenzing Montes, located at the southwestern edge of Sputnik. Its tallest peak is 6.2 kilometers tall. Also, many other peaks are above 4 kilometers. Right next to Sputnik, on its southern edge, is also where Wright Mons is, a 4 kilometer tall mountain that was possibly created because of cryovolcanic activity. Thambau Regio is the region that encompasses Sputnik. Sputnik is just the western side of Thambau. However, the eastern edge of Thambau is a lot more rugged. It has plenty of water ice. Now, right at the eastern edge of Sputnik, are a whole lot of flow patterns. The nitrogen seems to be flowing away from the rugged uplands. So some spots appear that they broke away from the rugged uplands and were pushed way further into Sputnik. Those spots are water ice chunks. And because water ice is less dense than nitrogen ice, those water ice chunks that broke away started floating on the nitrogen ice and became hills 
that stretch for up to 20 kilometers across. Sputnik is not only a plain, but also a basin. It is pretty deep. It has a depth of around 2 to 3 kilometers below the surrounding area. This depth, on top of some other things, led to the conclusion that Sputnik is an impact crater. The higher surface pressure at the bottom of the basin can increase the condensation rate for nitrogen, causing it to accumulate. Another thing that possibly contributed to the formation of this nitrogen ice sea is the fact that the coldest places on Pluto are not on the poles because of Pluto's odd axial tilt. Instead, the coldest regions are around the equator, and around the equator is exactly where the Sputnik Basin is. So because of the lowest amount of light received annually, nitrogen ice is most likely to start piling up there through a runaway process. As that accumulation was happening, that was also increasing reflectivity, so the spot became colder and colder, causing more and more ices to freeze there. Some suggestions even propose that the basin didn't even form in the first place because of an impact. Rather that, as the ices started accumulating, the weight of them caused the surface to sink. Sputnik is clearly a very odd and interesting feature. Sadly, we likely won't get to see it again for at least quite a while, that is, decades. It's extremely far away and there are no serious missions to return as of yet.